everybody uh, welcome to today's video in which I would try and explain the whole process of creating blueprints that you can use to go ahead and model your um, models or 3d models in a real world scale all right so before we do anything else I want to show you uh, this is one of the ways that you might get uh, something from a client or from the internet when you're trying to model something so in this case i actually have this chair so this was sent by the client and as you can see i only got like two images of how the chair should look like and then i have a front uh viewport and a side viewport now ideally when you're modeling something you would have the top view as well but we can actually work with just the front and the side so it shouldn't be too much of a problem so the first thing that we want to do is we want to open up this thing inside Photoshop and or pretty much any uh, editing uh, or picture editing software so that we can crop these images out and prepare them so we can uh, then use them inside 3ds Max. So first of all, let's start with Photoshop. So open up Photoshop. With Photoshop opened, I'm going to take my PDF file that I received or a JPEG and pull it in here. Now, as you can see right away, uh, I can start working on this. Now, what I want to do is whenever I'm creating my blueprints, I want to have them on a square uh, image. So what I generally do is I'm going to go in here and create a uh, new uh, file so simply go in and control n this is going to uh, create a new uh, image here so i can either choose to have a thousand by thousand pixels or two thousand by two thousand in this case i'm going to go uh, to uh, 2k by 2k and click ok now what i'm going to do here is go back here zoom in a bit and now so, uh, draw a selection around this portion it doesn't have to be uh, very very precise but we just want to encompass everything that we have here click and drag over to this uh, or the new file that we created doesn't matter drop it anywhere then go back here again make another selection around this piece click and drag it over on this side all right awesome now since we clicked and dragged them from the other uh, file over here from the PDF, you're going to notice that they come in at different layers. So this means that I can uh, individually click them on and off. That kind of helps me when I'm trying to position everything uh, where it's supposed to be. Now, in order for me to uh, have a bearing in what's what in the image, I'm going to click on uh, the side of the rulers. In case you don't have the rulers, what you want to do is hold on control and click R. So this is going to turn on the rulers. So when you click on the rulers, you can drop down a line and we get to the middle. You can notice that it kind of snaps. You can see it right here. So it's at 1000 pixels. And since we have a 2000 by 2000, this is a division in the middle. I'm going to click on this side and then draw one over here and put it in the middle as well. This is now telling me where the center of my image is. Now what I want to do here is take my first layer, position it to about there. I'm actually going to take my second and hide it for now. So I'm going to put it here and try to position it in the middle like so. All right, awesome. Now I'm going to uh, turn on the second layer and move this one in the middle as well. What I'm trying to do here is I'm going to uh, try to use this blue line as a sort of a uh, ruler to help me gouge where that uh, bottom of the chair is. In this case, so it's just a tiny bit lower till about here. All right, great. So here's the thing now. With both of these uh, selected, what I want to do is I want to transform them so it's a bit bigger. And because in this case, I'm going to lose a lot of uh, space if I just go in and make the image this big. So with both of these selected, so I'm going to select the first layer, hold on Shift, uh, hold uh, select the second layer, Control and T. 
And this is going to allow me to scale this thing uh, so it's a bit bigger. Now, if I click on one side, I can actually uh, scale it outwards, but when control Z that thing, I'm going to hold down shift and this is going to do uh, help me uniformly scale this thing upwards till about, yeah, let's go like this and then click enter. So now move both of these again to the down to this line. And once we've done this, what I want to do here is I'm going to click on the top again and draw one more line and put it at the bottom here. Another one for the top, like so. Let's just zoom in a bit so I can actually see how well that thing is moving. Move it to about there. All right. Great. Now I can uh, turn off the top one or the second layer, and I can see that this thing is actually more or less in the correct position. All right, I can probably just move this thing a tiny bit to the side, like so. And now this thing is in position where it's supposed to be. Now, here is another thing that I like to do when I'm creating my blueprints, namely, uh, if I use uh, th these images as they are, so I'm just going to click on these guidelines, remove them, so just move them to the side. If I uh, use them like this and put them inside 3ds Max, it's really going to be hard on your eyes. So what I uh, do usually do is I'm going to create a new layer here. So hold on, uh, Control Shift and N, and click OK, and fill in this layer with uh, let's try a blue color, so something like this. Since it's called a blueprint, we can pretty much use any color. I do prefer the blue color, uh, reduce the opacity to something like this, but I think it just a bit more bluish would be better. Awesome, this, this looks great. So I can see everything. There we go. All right, great. So now what I wanna do is uh, save this thing as a side view. So I'm going to go over to uh, to file, then save as. And in here, I want to save this th thing as a JPEG and call it a uh, left blueprint. Click save. Okay. And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to hide the second layer and unhide the first one. And again, going to do the same thing. Save us. Again, change this from PDF to JPEG and go front down uh, lowercase blueprint or BP. Save and OK. And this is basically enough for me to, uh, to be able to go back to max and start arranging this thing back inside over there. So let's switch over to Max. Once we're back in 3ds Max, now what, what, what I want to do here is I'm going to go over and create a plane in the front viewport. Make sure the length is uh, one by one. We don't need any more uh, length segments or width segments, so one by one will be fine. Uh, move this to zero, zero, zero. And now here's the, the important thing. Since this thing we know uh, is the size is uh, 2000 by 2000 uh, pixels, I want to put, uh, put it here. So I don't have to go pixel per centimeter. So I'm gonna go to 200 for 200. In this case, it still doesn't matter because we're just trying to retain or not uh, screw around with the aspect of the image. So we just want to have one uh, plane that's going to have the same aspect ratio as our blueprints. All right, so now I want to hold down shift and create one more uh, version over here at 90 uh, degrees, but just get it so it's 90 it's flat. All right, awesome. Move it to the back a bit. Move this thing to this side like so. All right, great. Now, here's the thing. We want to add in two uh, materials, 
this one is going to be the front material and this one is going to be the side material for the front one in the diffuse slot i'm going to click and drag my front blueprint so into the diffuse slot and for my second one again i'm going to click and drag my left blueprint so put this to the side now once i press show shaded material in viewport i'm going to see it over here over there and show shade with viewport here all right great so i have my blueprints inside 3ds max now is the time to create something called a placeholder in which uh, we're gonna later use in later in our modeling we're gonna use as a bounding cage the bounding cage is basically just a box which has exactly the size that you need to have for your model. So I'm just gonna go and create just a simple box like this. Doesn't have to be uh, anything fancy. And now I'm going to check my dim dimensions over here. First things first that I can see is the height for this thing. The height is 84 centimeters. So I'm gonna go in here and type in 84 exactly great now next thing that I want to control is my width the width is going to be over here which is 55 so 55 and the depth or the length is going to be this thing here so it's 56 so 56 and now I'm going to move this thing to zero, 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 like so. And this is a good start. And another thing that I want to have here is one more line, which is going to be at a uh, height 49, which is more or less going to be the height for the seat. So I'm, uh, in order to create that one, what I can do is either go in and add a edge, uh, manually and move it up or I can just create one more box give it a height of 49 like this now in the z-axis just move this thing to the bottom like that and now when I add a edit poly and add just one uh, edge with the uh, swift loop I can move this thing on the Z and snap it to this height. That way I know that this uh, edge here is going to be exactly at 49 centimeters. I no longer need this box. So this thing is okay. This is the exactly the size that I want my chair to be in. But now we come to the problem because if we take a look at this, our bounding box is a well, not the bounding box, but the blueprints are a bit bigger than our bounding box. So let's go ahead and fix that issue here. Easiest way to fix this issue would be simply select both of these uh, blueprints. And before I actually do that, I'm going to select a bounding box and press uh, Alt X just so I can make it so it's see through. Now select both of my blueprints and with the scale make sure you're at uniform scale just scale it downwards we're gonna move it around so don't worry about it make sure like I said you have both of them selected so when you're moving one or scaling one you're scaling them both that way they retain their uh, original size and now I'm going to try and manually match this thing as closely as possible to this thing now we know that this is 55 centimeters and we're just trying to make it so that the image is correlating with our bounding box. Once we have that done, which is, I think, just a tiny bit more. All right, let's zoom in. Yeah, we go just a smidge bigger. You could go in and do this thing uh, with right clicking on the uniform scale and then by just trying to like do it like this it's going to be more correct all right so here we go this thing is more or less uh, the size that we want it to be 
let's check it on the uh, left uh, side. Move it o over here. All right, so I can see that this thing, yep, it's close enough. It's within uh, a few millimeters of uh, size. So now what I want to do here is I'm going to select both of them. And instead of trying to get this thing to be on the bottom, I want to put the feet, the legs of the chair at the bottom here. That's thing on the top. Same thing goes over here. You probably could have made it just a tiny bit smaller, but I think this is within the margin of error. So there you go, something like this. And we're gonna be within a reasonable margin of error that we can uh, be comfortable and start modeling this thing. Another thing is that you, when you're going to be modeling something, you're probably not going to be touching the blueprints. So what you would do is select both of them, right click, uh, go into your object properties, click on freeze and show frozen in gray. When you click OK, now they're going to stay in the background. You will not be able to touch them. You can select your bounding box, turn on the layer explorer, and in here, put it in its own separate layer, call it bounding box. Make it transparent and you can hide it. So now when whenever you start modeling, you can start off from these blueprints and be fairly certain that the model that you're going to create is going to be in real world scale correct and with this we cover the creation of the blueprint for whatever 3d model that you're trying to create i hope you guys had fun and you learned something new if you do have any questions leave them below i will meet you in the comment section of the video if you enjoyed the video then please click the like button and if you're not subscribed now is a great time to do so as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.